This is Cybert signing into Kane's Wrath on the map. Forgotten Forest 6 for the finals of the 3v3 Kane's Wrath Championship Series. A big thanks to David for donating the prize pool to make these three slash four tournaments happen. It's been absolutely fantastic to watch all of the action unfold from the 1v1s to the 2v2s and now the 3v3s but let's kick it off in the top right hand corner as the yellow nod give it up for space and as the pink gdi this is master leaf rounding out team number one as the orange gdi this is green zero on the left side of Forgotten Forest 6, making up team number two as the green nod, this is Drive. Coming back from the finals of the 2v2 tournament and also in the finals, this is the red screen is no surprise, it's Bike Rush Owns. Rounding out our, our second team as the Cyan GDI, give it up for Futurama. The championship series has certainly been a tournament series to remember. Not often do we get sort of a 1v1, a 2v2, and a 3v3 all in sequence as part of a series of tournaments. So it's been absolutely great to watch this action unfolding. And hey now, Drive trying to disrupt the intro of this match with a bit of a flame tank rush. Right in the north, he's got himself a Black Hand Squad as well. This will get spotted by Space fairly early on, fairly far out. And of course, he does have the Militant Squad inside of that bunker, so he gets pretty good warning of it. Fortunately, he does have a couple of bikes here as well. And it looks like the MCV close to this, but not close enough. Already taking two shots from those bikes means this flame tank is going to show up pretty weak to the MCV party. Let's see how much damage he can actually burn down on this MCV, and about half of the health will be gone before the flame tank explodes. There's the pack up of the MCV trying to disrupt the attack of that Black Hand Squad and the flame tank, and the Black Hand Squad is just going to get crushed there by that Predator tank, and finally, the Conyard will be safe after losing two-thirds of its health. Not a great opening there for Masterleaf, but I'm sure the rest of these guys are developing fairly normally. I do like this move from Masterleaf right out of the gate, trying to claim one of the contested fields, and at the same time, Greens are going to be expanding to the south, so there will be ample opportunity for our team on the right side to get up their mid-game economy. I do want to mention the prize pool for this tournament, $500. It looks like it is $250 going to first place and $150 going to second place, and then $100 to third place. And, well, when you divide up those numbers between three people, that's where things start to get a little bit smaller. But it's always nice to have a bit of cash thrown towards not just the 1v1s, but the team tournaments as well. So, of course, the prize pool isn't insane, but the fact that these guys are getting played to, pay, to play Kane's Wrath in 2021 is pretty awesome. Descents in the south. A couple of pit bulls moving through the middle of the map, and Masterleaf has done a pretty good job of establishing himself here in the center northern spot. So let's see if he's able to hold on to that location or if everything goes sideways for him. One Harvester going to be trying to transfer down to the south, takes a couple of shots from the green zero pit bulls. And for now, the pit bulls should be skating away. I think this is gonna be too many reinforcements coming in eventually from our team on the left side. But no, Space is looking to keep up the damage. He wants to dance a little longer, and it looks like the descents are going to be getting in on the action, but not really because they're just too darn slow against those speedy, speedy pit bulls and the attack bikes. Predator Tank's going to be tangoing with these laser turrets, and this attack, if they join together, could actually punch through in the north and potentially do some damage. We'll see if they're able to get any real damage done other than just trading blows with base defenses. And perhaps a bit of indecision here as they pull in and go around. They uh, swing forward, they swing back, they're trying to find a better angle. Descent's Seeker is going to be going up against Pred APC in the south, and that 
we'll do it. Okay, so this is the game that disconnects. So we will be replaying game number one, and unfortunately, unlike uh, you know StarCraft II or games with better post-release support, we don't have a resume from replay functionality. So we will not be able to pick this up exactly where we left off, but that explains why there are two Forgotten Forest games in this replay pack. But let's jump into game number one. And we are back on Forgotten Forest 6 for the re-game. I did want to cover that first match, so we get to see how these guys played out a little bit differently. Fortunately, we were only four or five minutes into that when things went sideways, so is Drive going to try the same flame tank rush? Probably not, but we shall see. That would actually be kind of funny if he did, because it's like they're going to be expecting it, right? So then the least thing that they expect is that you'll actually do it. But we'll see. In the north, as the yellow nod, this is space. And as the blue GDI this time, not pink, it's Master Leaf. And as the orange GDI, it's Green Zero. On the left side of the map, things are looking very similar to how they were. As the green nod, this is Drive. And as the red screen, give it up for Bike Rush Owns. And rounding out our sixth player as the Cyan GDI once again, Futurama. Futurama, Bike Rush, Drive, literally three of the four players who were in the finals of the 2v2 tournament. Which, by the way, if you haven't seen the 2v2 tournament, uh, some of the individual series weren't the best that we've ever seen. But on a whole, that was probably the best 2v2 tournament that Kane's Wrath has ever seen. Like, when you take the quarterfinals, the semis, the bronze match, and the finals all together, they were definitely, I think it was probably the best overall 2v2 tournament that we've ever seen. Let's take a quick check in. Okay, we got double refinery. Uh, I don't know what that harvester's doing. He's hanging out over there way in the north. I'm not sure uh, why Drive is doing that, but that is not a good piece of the recipe for a flame tank rush. So it is not going to be a flame tank rush, and we'll have to see if Master Leaf goes ultra fast towards the middle of the map. Green Zero going to be pulling his MCV away from the cliff there, and it looked like, that looked like a deliberate move, but uh, you always want to keep your MCV in a place where it can deploy immediately if need be. The number of MCVs that have gotten sniped over the course of these three or four tournaments is pretty ridiculous. Space coming in here with a couple of bikes, going to be targeting down at least one Harvester of, of Drives. I don't think he'll actually get the Harvester. I think the bikes will be pushed away by the forces of Drive. Even a Seeker Tank, even a Pitbull getting in on this defense and going to be pushing Space away. He's just he's just too dangerous, that Space fellow. But okay, we've got a reset after game number one. Everyone kind of got an opportunity to try something out and just to see how the game developed kind of uh, in the initial phase, and then you get to replay that and potentially make some changes. In this particular case, Futurama heading down here. We actually get the same descent kind of play that we saw Bike Rush doing in the last game. And uh, I believe it was just Pred APC, the response for Green Zero. Ooh, these Pitbulls getting caught. Maybe even they trade out with one Seeker Tank. They don't get caught by the descents, so those descents don't manage to close the distance to seal the deal. They're going to keep chasing those pit bulls. Nope, they turn south. They head back kind of over towards this blue Tiberium field. Master Leaf has not gone quickly for the center green Tiberium, so they're actually going to be focusing a little bit more. Master Leaf is going to be coming in here to the south, dropping down some, well, at least a barracks. He's got at least one, two refineries. He's got himself four or five harvesters on this southern field as well. Beacon going down. And some forces, so this was Bike Rush Owns trying to hey, say, hey, there are some pit bulls down there. And look at this, this force from Bike Rush Owns and Futurama. It looks like it's entirely just a cover for the harvesting of this blue Tiberium. This is not necessarily a force that's going to do any damage. I guess if these descents get in here and do any damage, that's sort of the cherry on top. AP ammo about halfway done, by the way, for Green Zero. And then I guess he could be going for power packs or sensor pods, but no. AP ammo, about halfway done there for Green Zero. 
Ooh, into Hammerheads for Master Leaf. So again, super delay on the Northern Tiberium field. There's no early grab by Master Leaf. It looks like one, two, three Harvesters stealing that Blue Tiberium. So a very safe way to steal that Blue Tiberium, put a teensy tiny bit of pressure on Green Zero and Master Leaf down here in the south. You know, keep these bikes from space busy and just make them chase the descent and go as far into enemy territory as you can. That draws your opponent's forces away. You get some uh, nice harvesting done at that Blue Tiberium. It looks like Bike Roshones is going to have to turn around that harvester and uh, escape with it. A lot of Predator tanks, not a lot of APC or just anti-infantry in general. So they're going to back up. AP ammo finished up for Futurama as well. And we'll see uh, how much those Predator tanks can uh, deal with those rocket squads. There's the MCB on the move for Master Leaf. So he is going to be taking that center Tiberium field in the north. And there's the Operation Center coming up for Drive as well. Beacons going off in the south. I'm not sure what exactly uh, Bike Rush was beaconing for. But we do have a tripod and a signal transmitter also here. So, oh, we're going... We're going straight into a wormhole, directly into the natural expansion of our team on the right side. A hammerhead shows up to uh, get shot a little bit here, and a hologram army going to be showing up to just absorb a couple of those shots. And it looks like Master League going to be losing so many harvesters stacked up on top of each other. The parking lot working against Master League as he loses almost every single harvester at his natural expansion. I don't even know if he has even one left. Green Zero and Space relative unharmed from that attack looks like an airfield going to be getting sold off or destroyed mines get dropped on top of the predator tanks and do eliminate two maybe even three of them as the bikes are looking to deal with the rest of those forces another uh, I actually don't know if that was a sell-off or a destruction but a tripod going down as well as a power plant and a refinery in the south. Sonic Emitter is here to deal with the remainder of these tanks and Futurama, he knows that these tanks are dead as that wormhole expires, so does the opportunity for those tanks to get out of there alive and Futurama just wanted to get as much value as he possibly can. There's going to be uh, well, no EMPs. I'm not sure who fired off that little uh, redemption zone or whatever it's called to spawn in the Awakened squads, but didn't didn't look like a lot of EMPs fired off because of that. And oh, the clutch save, the disruption tower from space coming in at the last possible second. So many hammerheads going down. Futurama losing every single hammerhead that he committed to that attack. A couple of Predator tanks getting eliminated here in the middle of the map. And double... <laughs> double disruption tower coming down to cover the expansion in the north. But that looked like it was a double refinery kind of catalyst missile coming out from Drive. you got to hand it to Drive being able to get that kind of value. Which really, team games are the only time you get a double refinery with a catalyst missile. In 1v1s, people are too careful. They're too well-versed in spreading out their refineries. Only really in team games where things get a bit crowded do you have the opportunity to get that kind of value. All right, in the north, the contested green Tiberium field is going solidly to Master Leaf Space and Green Zero, although really it's just space with the actual economy on the front line utilizing Master Leaf's build radius. And Master Leaf may choose to kind of Marvist this field. We'll have to see exactly what he plans to do. But another Marv going to be coming out, this one for Green Zero. Someone's Redeemer just stepped out onto the field, so Rage Gen will be firing off in moments. We have no doubt about that. Planetary Assault Carriers also here, and I actually don't remember hearing the Eradicator Hexapod scream as it enters the map, so this may actually be a non-Eradicator kind of army for Bike Rush owns, and I mean, the Eradicator Hexapod can be an extremely cost-effective unit, so it's uh, obviously a very common thing for people to build Redemption Zone for the EMPs if we get any Awakened squads out on the field. But there's the Stasis locking down the Marv and allowing these tripods to get up close and personal. 
As Masterleaf with one Orca just standing by, not currently attacking any of the tripods. Shockwave artillery firing off, and will it really cement down these tripods? Two of them get locked down, five of them get locked down, a sixth gets held in position, and the MCV gets EMP'd, and this Marv is most likely going to get EMP'd and just potentially destroyed. Juggernauts from Masterleaf getting in on the action, and an AA battery going to be claiming that planetary assault carrier. A second AA battery going down, trying to deny the air armada of bike rush owns the marv goes down but so many tripods die in the process the double engineer redeemer on the front line from drive going to be trying to help out with this battle but they might actually just be going for harvesters the only thing they can safely get here on the front line the entire army of Bike Rush owns has evaporated. Meanwhile, in the south, Juggernauts shelling each other from both sides of the Tiberium field. Green Zero unable to make any more progress, and it looks like Zone Troopers coming in for a bit of harvester harassment or something way down in the south. Drive backs off with his Redeemer in the north, going to be shelling the, the husks of Bike Rush's tripods, trying to deny those from their opponents to capture them. Master Leaf going for some zone troopers as well. Futurama getting his own zone troopers, and Green Zero with the wall of Juggernauts is going to be able to put out so much damage against his opponents, unless of course they can close the distance. Shredder Troy going down to protect those Juggernauts, and good by zone troopers, they get scared away. Rage Gen versus Rage Gen, who will have the ultimate generator of rages? The MCV moves ever further forward. Master Leaf getting a little bit cautious, going to be reverse moving away from the front line. Deploys right there. A little bit of friendly fire, going to be eliminated. One Spectre, not a super value. Okay, two Juggernauts immediately deleted. A third one goes down as well. Green Zero just with overwhelming firepower, but Futurama in the north starting to make a name for himself. And this tripod getting on top of the forces of Green Zero. Green Zero collapsing from the north to the south. Meanwhile, he held his ground against the forces of Futurama for a short while, but... The firepower is overwhelming from our team on the left side. The MCV getting targeted down. Devastator warships, planetary assault carriers are here to stay. The juggernauts of Futurama, they are not in high numbers, but in combination with those Devastator warships, they should be able to keep up the assault, keep up the battery as the MCV falls. Meanwhile, in the north, Master Leaf and Space have actually managed to hold on to this center Tiberium field. Here's the mothership force firing the ground and there's the buzzer swarm, the buzzer hive to try and carry that forward and the Tiberium explodes as Master Leaf loses his entire front line. Everything gets eliminated, even chaining into the main base as everything goes down. And that <laughs> was incredible. I uh, can't remember the last time I saw Mothership chain that far. Normally, it's just the stuff that's super localized, but Space has been defeated. Master Leaf has been defeated. Green Zero has been defeated. The Mothership play coming out from Bike Rush Owns. That 4v4 that I just posted the other day definitely did a ton of damage, but that stuff was a lot tighter packed, and that just barely got into the main base. What an insane amount of damage done by that mothership. One clutch play by Bike Rush Owns to seal the deal. Now, certainly our team on the left side was having a bit of an upper hand, certainly in the south, and they may have been able to break forward in the north, but that mothership just guaranteed the win. No coming back after something like that. You have the structures tab just absolutely deleting everything from the game. And very unfortunate for our team on the right side. They did not have the resources or the units to stop that kind of a play. And the mothership firing off from the safe side of the Tiberium field. That will do it for a pretty crazy game number one to kick off our 3v3 finals. And on the map, Tiberium Resistance is where game number two will take place. Our northern team as the yellow Scrim. This is Master Leaf. As the blue nod, this is space. And way over in the corner as the orange GDI dropping a crane, this 
is green zero. In the very southern position as the red GDI, this is Bike Rush owns. His own MCV on the way to an actual Tiberium field as the Cyan Scrin. It's Futurama. And as the green nod, give it up for Drive. Drive Futurama and Bike Rush owns claiming game number one but certainly our team in the north putting up a very good fight. Looks like this Tib Spike is going to be taking a little bit of damage from these Visceroids, and that's a bit unfortunate for Space, who gets himself a nice Tiberium Spike, and then the neutral creatures on... Well, I guess they're not so neutral if they're attacking you, but the creatures on the map start attacking it, and... Uh, I think this is one of those maps where if infantry run through Tiberium fields, they will sometimes spawn into Visceroids or Viceroids. And uh, eventually they will go down. Tip Spike will survive this onslaught, but that's definitely something that could be annoying. Three little blue Tiberium fields on this map in the presence of craters. And then as you already saw, one of the players on this map starts out in a very weird spot. You get these two Tiberium silos as well, so you can start cranking on those Tib refineries immediately. And you got a little bit of extra storage for all of that Tiberium for just a moment. Green Zero and Bike Rush Owns going to be taking the biggish green fields, and you do have a little neighboring small green field, but that's probably going to be the natural expansion of the Futurama or the Master Leaf player. Both of them playing Scrin, switching over from GDI to Scrin for game number two. And now we do have a GDI nod Scrin on each team. So we get a lovely split between all three of them. I don't know that we'll see another mothership coming in with their catalyst cannon to seal the deal on a game, but maybe. Maybe just maybe another flame tank coming in here for Drive. Going to be getting targeted down. Even the laser turret getting in on the action as the War Factory survives. And in this case, it may have actually been better to keep the, fl the flame tank over here, away from where that laser turret ended up spawning, and uh, try and do the damage there. But Drive drove on forward, and it looks like he's got another flame tank over here on the left side. Master Leaf dropping a beacon saying, I'm going to try and clear out the left side for you. Playing nice with his buddy. Seeker Tanks in the middle of the map. Descents as well. Going to be trading just back and forth. Not really enough forces on either side to make a real play out of that kind of a move. Space has taken his natural expansion. So everyone is nicely set up. Bike Rush is going to be trying to steal this blue Tiberium. As always, Bike Rush is trying to steal away that blue Tiberium from his opponents. A little bit of pressure coming Space's way. He's got himself a laser turret. He's got himself a photon cannon as well. But it's going to be repair drones are here. So these pit bulls and these seeker tanks are here to stay. Trading against the base defenses may not be the best way to do this. But with a lightning spike and some predator tanks, they may be able to make a little bit more damage happen. We'll have to see if anything else comes up. There's the EMP locking down a couple of these harvesters and stopping them from escaping. So Space is going to be losing three harvesters it looks like on his natural expansion very unfortunate for him that he did not have the opportunity to retreat those away when he would have liked and they're going to be trading it out with a decent number of seeker tanks and predator apcs pit bulls as well so i'm not sure how cost effective that really was but at the same time bike rush owns stealing away that blue tiberium getting himself some extra value from that engagement on top of completely denying space's economy at his natural expansion so space is going to take a minute to try and stabilize and recover from that attack that was coming in. It looks like Bike Rush Owns is going to take some damage on the Harvester, but ultimately he will be able to save it with his forces. Master Leaf with a couple of Seeker Tanks, a couple of Gunwalkers way over here on the right side of the map. And at the same time, well, Bike Rush Owns is moving his MCV forward. Hammerhead's coming in. I'm not sure who those are for Green Zero. I'm guessing is, that's whose Hammerheads those are. Yeah, as Futurama does take some or do some damage against them. So those are indeed Green Zero's Hammerheads. I guess Bike Rush's Hammerheads wouldn't be over there. And, well, 
this is uh, something. He drops a gravity stabilizer down immediately. So I'm guessing it's going to be Devastator Warships. I guess it could be something else, but probably Devastator Warships right onto the front line, getting your artillery just up in the air to start shelling the enemy's base immediately. Airfield also coming down from Bike Rush Owns, so whether or not it's for Hammerheads, or Firehawks, or Orcas, it's going to be directly onto the front line. Sam Sites getting EMP'd as well as that Devastator Warship immediately eliminated there. Very nicely done as action exploding kind of all over the map. Flame tanks managing to sneak their way in past the base defenses and unfortunately for space he is just getting torn apart on the front line and at the back his main base is just shredded. Devastator warships getting some a couple of shots off but uh, really the dev tanks going down and the sonic emitters trying to deal with the juggernauts and the railgun predator tanks. This flame tank continuing to burn down more and more of the infrastructure of of space getting all the way up to double vent before going down it looks like it will almost get another power plant i can't believe how much damage he got on that power plant before finally going down with all of those forces attacking him looks like these lightning oh no this is another flame tank lightning strikes aren't even the course of all of these attack markers all over the map the little battle markers popping up some of them are just from the ion storm coming through and doing a bit of damage here and there. The Visceroid going to attack that Harvester, but it looks like Bike Rochones will be able to deal with that. Green Zero going to be tangoing with the forces of Bike Rochones, but this is just way too much from Futurama. Who, uh, Bike Rochones was playing Scrin the last time, but Futurama is the current Scrin player. Catalyst Missile locks down one of those refineries, and Space has held the line with the help of Masterleaf and Green Zero. He has held the line nonetheless. Now Masterleaf, with his own Devastator warships directly onto the front line, is going to be pushing back, uh, pushing back Bike Rush Owns and Futurama. So they are not going to hold this section of the map for very much longer. Well, we'll see. The uh, Marv is almost here. The Juggernauts and the Predator tanks are here in support. And the Hammerheads might actually just want to pop on over there to kill off that Harvester. No, the Juggernauts were able to do it very nicely there. Double Railgun, double Engineer in theory. If Bike Rush Owns would join up that Engineer with this Marv. Hammerheads going to be coming in first. Juggernauts a little bit exposed as the EMP locks down the Green Zero Marv. Allowing Bike Rush Owns to get some critical shots off on it. Shockwave Artillery going to repeat that lockdown and this Marv is not long for this world. Only two juggernauts as the guard for that Marv. Green Zero gives away his tier 3 and his tier 4 unit as he drops that entire army. Futurama starting to close in. A couple of hammerheads are here for defense. Not a lot of anti-air packed in with this army of Futurama. But Futurama might be too busy killing harvesters to worry about a couple of hammerheads trying to eliminate his tripod slowly but surely taking them down bit by bit. Juggernauts on the front line getting annihilated as Futurama continues to carve through the harvesters of Green Zero. Every single harvester on the front line going down. Zone Troopers getting called in for extra firepower and support as Bike Rush Owns rekindles his attack against Master Leaf and against Space on the right side. The Eradicator Hexpod will never come into this game as the Warp Chasm gets eliminated. The Storm Column, the little defense that still remains against the firepower of bike rush owns. Space has been defeated. Green Zero and Master Leaf type the GG and leave the game as Green Zero, Master Leaf and Space drop game number two. That, is that onslaught on the right side. Too much damage. Space unfortunately getting knocked for a bit of a loop fairly early on and never really able to recover. His economy nearly completely flatlining there, which I assume is about the time when that, that that attack struck and he lost all of those harvesters and he never really recovered. Even Drive, who was lagging seriously behind everyone else, was somehow still ahead of space. And that will do it for game number two. Let's see what happens in game number three. And that takes us to Arctic 6. For game number three, some delightful pipeline art going on. As the cyan screen on the right side, as our first player, this is Futurama. In the middle, as the green nod, this is Drive. And rounding out team number one, feeling pretty good about their performance in games one and two, we have as the red GDI, Bike Rush Owns. 
on the left side of Arctic 6, in the north as the yellow GDI. Give it up for Green Zero. They did indeed rotate all of their colors. As the purple nod, this is Masterleaf. Wanting to try all three factions, and as the orange scrim, this is space. All right, Arctic 6, we have maybe seen this map once or twice before. I know I've played a couple of map matches on this map, but uh, I guess we haven't seen it in a competitive setting because there, haven't been, uh, there hasn't been a 3v3 tournament in I don't even know how long. So I don't think we've ever seen this map in a competitive setting. A couple of Tiberium spikes per player, it looks like. And uh, some bunkers and some contested Tiberium spikes in the middle of the map. This map is kind of laid out with a fairly low amount of Tiberium per player. You have these expansion fields, which are quite small near the Tib spikes of the North and the South player. But uh, it's really just kind of like one big field per player. Which is, I mean, you get three blue Tiberium fields, but there is just not a lot of Tiberium on this map. So we'll have to see exactly how that changes, how players decide to play this one out. But in this particular case, it'll probably be pretty standard. We'll have to see if there are any shenanigans planned for this match. There haven't been, other than Drive's Flame Tanks, there really hasn't been anything rushy. There hasn't been anything cheesy. It's not been anything too out of the ordinary for this series so far. There haven't even been any, like, double War Factory all-ins or anything like that. I wonder where Master Leaf is going with his MCV. I mean, this is really the only field that you have. You can try and share this field with your ally, but I don't know how they'd feel about that. Looks like Futurama did grab that EMP control center and Space grabbed the EMP control center on the left side. So both have been claimed. They are keeping an eye on each other in that case. A couple of pit bulls coming through just to take a look at exactly what's going on. I guess just really the one pit bull from Bike Rush owns to take a look at what's going on. Scorpion Tanks and Seekers joining together. Master Leaf and Space once again kind of joining forces, doing a little bit of pressure, not necessarily looking to do a lot of damage, but Master Leaf may literally be taking some of this Tiberium from Space. He's like, hey, I'm going to be using it more than you. And uh, quite possibly they agreed to that. One Harvester from Green Zero going down, getting eliminated there as Bike Rush owns, does manage to sneak a kill in in the north, but also sneak away with some of his own Tiberium. Bikes from Drive going to be helping to keep the Scorpion tanks of Masterleaf at bay. And Masterleaf, with this double War Factory Scorpion tank production, is just going to have a crazy number of tanks out on the field. It looks like that's his whole entire plan. Drive with a couple of Scorpion tanks of his own going to be buying time so Bike Rush Owns can get out some rocket troopers. Repair drones going to be coming in for space to try and allow this attack to last a little bit longer. All three of the Seekers go down extremely quickly. At least two of them go down extremely extremely quickly, and the other one holds on to life for just a moment longer, but the entire attack getting pushed back quite easily by our combined defensive forces from our team on the right side. A couple of Seeker Tanks coming through, and these Seeker Tanks may actually be able to clean up a couple of Harvesters, which would be a great disruption to Master Leaf's economy. One Harvester going down, Photon Cannons and Lightning Spikes being brought in to defend, although the Lightning Spike is actually being brought in to attack as a second Harvester getting targeted down, and Space desperately trying to hold on to this position as well as Master Leaf, but Futurama losing ground moment by moment, even going to be bringing to since in to try and finish off a third Harvester. A great move there by Futurama as it turns out. Committing a couple of extra descents to this attack. Got him an extra Harvester kill and made that attack that much more worth it. Back, Bike Rush owns trying to hold off against the Orcas of Green Zero as it looks like two, maybe three Harvesters went down there. And Bike Rush owns his economy has been completely disrupted. Meanwhile, Green Zero has held off the Scorpion tanks of Drive. Going to be forcing that back 
space, taking control of this blue Tiberium in the south. A great move by him to recognize the extreme limited nature of the Tiberium on this map and to secure that blue Tiberium with his forces. EMP fires off, locks down a couple of APCs, a couple of tanks as well. But is there forces here to actually devour these forces? And the answer so far is no, as the EMP wears off. Master Leaf commits a little bit to this defense, and the reverse move bug does kind of work against him for just a moment there. Laser capacitors have it finished up. Dry <laughs> and Bike Rush owns going to be joining forces to attack in the north. Catalyst Missile dropping one of those refineries, denying a bit of that income and causing a bit of a hang-up for the forces of Green Zero. Sonic Emitter gets a beautiful shot off there, blasting three, now four, of those Scorpion tanks. Predators as well going down to the forces of Green Zero, who is just absolutely smashing this attack with that defense. That Sonic Emitter and those Orcas doing so much damage. Futurama holding his own against the forces of space, but space is partially just covering for his expansion into the blue Tiberium and buying time for his warp chasm to get out the Eradicator Hexapod. Space doesn't have to win the game right in this moment in the south. He just needs to control this blue Tiberium long enough to get an edge in this match and long enough for his Eradicator Hexapod to get out onto the field. No hexalamine in the first two and a half games, but we'll have to see what our screen players decide to do here in game number three. The MCV is on the move forward. Mechapede's pulling away to the south drive, trying to establish himself with his MCV a little bit more securely in the middle of the map. He's going to try and steal more of that blue Tiberium. We saw Master, we saw Bike Rush Owens stealing some of that blue Tiberium as he drops down double AA batteries, trying to kill off those Orcas that have been causing him so many problems. A couple of Mechapedes going to be coming in, but I think these are sacrificial Mechapedes, possibly even just to call in... Maybe they're just scouting Mechapedes. I'm not exactly sure what his whole deal is with these two Mechapedes heading super deep behind enemy lines. A lot of blue Tiberium is here to potentially be claimed. Shockwave artillery fires off, but everything pulls back from the location where it was, and space is slowly but surely hunting down every single segment that Futurama has, and eventually they will all go down. <laughs> As eventually, it will surely tie this one Mechapede segment <laughs> surviving for so long, the head of that Mechapede trying to keep itself alive for so much longer than it had a right to. Bike Rush owns forming up in the north. The Tiberium on the right side of the map getting dangerously low. Master Leaf prolonging his own Tiberium harvesting by expanding into Space's field. And Space is going to slowly harvest some of that Tiberium away from Master Leaf. So they're going to be trading out on the green Tiberium. Green Zero going to be losing yet another harvester to the forces of Bike Rush owns. But. Green Zero has the Orcas. Green Zero has the Juggernauts as he heads forward with the Orcas right into the line of fire of so many rocket troopers who are just getting some nice damage off almost for free, but ultimately I think those rocket troopers will trade their lives for it. Shockwave artillery firing off here and there. Or maybe it's further down in the south as it locks down so many tripods from space as Futurama's forces sound a full retreat. Futurama, no match for space and Master Leaf. The Rage Gen and the Redeemer and the tripods combined. Green Zero going to be slowly but surely moving out in the north, and this is partially covering for his stealing of that blue Tiberium. If he could get four loads of blue Tiberium, that would be a serious amount of cash. Snipes another harvester of Bike Rush Owns, and the nuke is on the way for Drive. Bike Rush Owns looks like his forces are going to be getting eaten up by the combined strength of Green Zero and Master Leaf. Bike Rush Owns floundering here as he splits his forces in a very bizarre way and unfortunately for him he does not have a clean engagement there. Vertigo Bombers coming in for someone and trying to find a good angle. It looks like Master Leaf is the one with the Vertigo Bombers, maybe even hunting Harvesters, but no, it's, it's Predator Tanks and Harvesters in the north. Husks getting eliminated. It looks like Spectres actually getting eliminated as they deal with those Vertigo Bombers. The AA batteries dealing with those Vertigo Bombers, rather. Juggernauts against Predator Tanks. And one more Harvester going down for Green Zero. But Green Zero has killed more than his fair share of Harvesters over the course of this game. 
Redeemer through the middle of the map. Looks like Futurama was able to get some of this blue Tiberium, maybe, but ultimately his harvesters are heading directly into enemy territory, auto harvesting in the wrong direction. Bike Rochon's continuing to get chased away from the blue Tiberium from Green Zero. Bit of a roll reversal from what normally happens. Both teams having some real difficulty in breaking the other one. Both the teams on the left and on the right side standing strong against each other. Big Vertigo army coming in here for Mask Relief. I mean, Vertigo is one of those kind of overlooked units. People do not utilize them as much as they probably should be utilized. But a guy like Master Leaf, who's always looking for something around the edges of the game. He's always looking for the new thing that nobody quite figured out yet. He's the guy who will utilize Vertigos and absolutely demolish with them. Bike Rush Owns is not looking like he's some kind of super powerhouse player in this match. He's uh, having a bit of difficulty finding his legs, honestly. And uh, he's got a couple of Predator tanks, and he's got a Marv with four railguns on it. So he has gone sort of maximum. I guess that's one way to deal with a sensor pod. He has gone sort of maximum uh, damage output on that Marv with the four railguns, the four zone troopers in there. Harvester v. Harvester, but of course a Redeemer is helping out one of those Harvesters, helping it do a little bit more damage. Goodbye Harvester of Bike Rush Owns. Master Leaf and Green Zero going to be stepping on forward. And is that a sensor pod on a Marv to reveal stealth around it? EMP fires off, locks down a couple of those juggernauts, but also gets some Venoms and some Orcas. The supersonic airstrike clears out the hammerheads, and the Vertigo bombers escape away to the north. The reverse EMP locking down two Mar or two Redeemers, it looks like, as phase fires off for both Scrin players, and the orbital bombardment comes down, nearly smashing those Scorpion tanks as they escape space steps forward but in the south Futurama is marching to victory almost unopposed in the south as it's going to be a fight north versus south it looks like green zero master leaf and space are going to be winning in the north but perhaps losing in the south as bike rush owns marvs dies unceremoniously just completely eliminated crush for the win but there's a stasis to lock down so many tripods giving an opportunity for these vertigo bombers to clean up the rest three tripods going down at once as the descents try to break through the infrastructure but is there actually enough firepower here a great mind drop directly in front of where those tripods are going to spawn in buying even more time for the wormhole to get the reinforcements way down to the south for space who has now got enough firepower to stand against the forces of Futurama. Rage Gen fires off, but the Royal Juggernauts just carve through everything in the north, crushing all of Bike Rush's forces, crushing Drive's forces as well. A couple of hammerheads are here to clean up so many of the husks, going to deny the engineers from getting in those husks, and Futurama has committed to this attack full bore, but with two minutes left on the clock, the nuke may be the last thing that these guys have. Bike Rush has been defeated, Futurama has been defeated, and Drive taps the GG and leaves the game. Game number three going to Green Zero, Master Leaf, and Space putting a point on the board and stopping this from being a clean sweep. With these six players, we definitely do want to go all the way to an ace match, so it's great to see them finally put one on the board and stop the bleeding. But let's see what happens in game number four. Which takes us from Arctic Six to the red zone map, Dead Six. Which takes us from Arctic Six to the red zone map, Dead Six. And I guess certainly three of these players will be dead, but, well, I guess five of them could die over the course of this game. But let's kick off game number four with our team in the north, spawning in the center as the pink GDI. Give it up for Master Leaf. Check out that crane first kind of build. Now on the left side as the screen. He's actually uh, 
You're supposed to have an MCV somewhere, buddy. But he does indeed. It's over here. This is space. And on the right side, possibly also moving their MCV as the purple GDI. This is Green Zero. Purple and pink GDI players. Meanwhile, on the south, probably heading for the blue as well as the Cyan GDI. This is Futurama. All right, in the middle as the green nod. Give it up for Drive. Hey now, Operations Center right out of the gate. Is this another flame tank rush? We shall see. But on the left side, as the red nod, this is Bike Rush Owns. Look at that, selling off his crane. He says, I don't need no crane. All right, what do we got right out of the gate? Reckoner. Is there a flame tank somewhere? I love this scout coming out from space. He's got the buzzer. He's across the map. He's trying to look at exactly what his opponents are doing. And he's going to get a black hand inside of this Reckoner, but only one. Is this a fake out? No, he's going bikes after this. This is such a weird build coming out here for Drive. He's uh, going like single flame Reckoner. And he's going to be going for the War Factor. This is going to be pretty tough to hold this off, but we shall see. Now, Space drops a Lightning Spike to help deal with this. Here's the second Reckoner, and one of them is indeed a clone Reckoner for Bike Rush Own, so it's going to absorb a little bit of damage. This is the Distraction Reckoner, and this is the real Reckoner, which is meant to burn down a refinery. Meanwhile, the bikes are going to be taking a couple of shots at those harvesters. No, the, the bikes just run away. I'm not sure what this build is. I'm not sure what this opening is. The lightning spike from space is a great move. That's a buggy scout on the left side of the map. I'm unsure of what this build was supposed to be. There's the heal up of that refinery, so the engineer gets the heal on that ref. I, space just super delayed his own economy for not a super good reason. It's a little bit like it's Bike Rush Owns and Futurama versus Space and Mas and Green Zero, but then Drive doesn't exist, but Master Leaf does. So yeah, economically, it's like a 2v3 in this particular moment. Drive is super hampered, and that did almost nothing to slow down Green Zero at all. It did a little bit, but almost nothing to slow down Green Zero. Flame Tanks coming in for Bike Rush Owns. He got a decent amount of health down on one of those extractors, and he is not going to get the refinery. That, again, is... Um, all right, Tib Core Missile burns down two of those refineries, and Bike Rush Owns is making something happen. He is going... I didn't even realize he went, like, mass flame tank. So he drops a Tib Vapor Bomb and a Tib Vein Detonation on that, and Master Leaf is just getting roasted and toasted Goodbye, primary power plant, and goodbye, potential tier two and other power plant. Double airfield on the right side for Master Leaf. Scouting Pitbull coming in there, and the uh, Juggernauts, I guess, getting some insane shots off on those. Getting some insane shots off on those Predator tanks. The Flame tanks do get cleaned up, and for now, Bike Rush Owns has taken the foot off the gas, but he's about to put it back on the flames as he comes in here with a stealth tank and a buggy to try and clean up Master Leaf. Now, Master Leaf probably has no cash left over for a, ooh, for a harvester, and he just lost Orcas to the Firehawks. No, he did. He has enough for a refinery. Okay, so Master Leaf is back in this, presuming that the flame tank from Bike Rush Owns, wherever it ended up, here on the right side, doesn't burn him down. APC Preds coming in here, but Futurama's gonna shut that down real hard with a Sonic Emitter with Juggernauts as well, and one Scorp Predator tank does barely manage to escape. This game has gotten a little bit weird and a little bit unconventional. These Orcas standing guard over Harvesters, not something you typically see. And these Orcas are gonna get sniped one after the other. They are on hold fire stance, which is a little bit unfortunate for Master Leaf, but understandable. That's normally what you want Orcas to be doing is on that hold fire stance. One avatar given away. Bike Rush Jones is gonna have to mount a famous Bike Rush defense in this situation. 
going to be trying to replenish some of this green blue field with green Tiberium crystals. One harvester going down, Avatar and beam cannons as well as base defense is going to be holding the line for Bike Rush Owns. Meanwhile, Orca's dealing with at least one of those stealth tanks. No, I guess that might have been the flame tank trying to sneak in there or something as Futurama continues to hold the line against Green Zero on the right side and just not enough firepower from our Scrin fellow. He did not actually produce anything tier three. That was an entirely like tier one and tier two kind of attack, which is uh, not what I expected when he was moving out across the map against avatars. I thought he was gonna have reinforcements like tripods or a million more dev tanks or something, but he just totally backed off of that attack because he really did not have a whole lot going on. Masterleaf has been beaten and bruised pretty badly. It looks like his MCV might be completely out of commission now as he's got these two airfields. He can produce orcas, hammerheads to his heart's content, but that is about it. Space is now going to be expanding backwards to his primary field, as is Green Zero, Futurama, and Bike Rush Owns. They're all getting that green field as their, as their kind of natural expansion economy up and running. Green Zero, he is powered up and ready to go with a gigantic Predator tank army, but he is not ready to move out. And against Juggernauts, he does not want to be the guy walking into just endless Juggernaut fire with, with uh, artillery raining down upon him and EMPing him. But I will have to see exactly what happens. All of these descents joining together in a focus fire of the ground there. And there's the stasis locking down the Redeemer, getting two of the avatars and the MCV. This is the moment for space to step forward. And on the other side of the map, it looks like Green Zero and Futurama going to be engaging with each other. Green Zero's Predator Tank Army has backed up to try and avoid some of those one clicks and survive a little bit longer. It's going to be buggies from Drive to provide the support against the descents for Bike for Bike Rush's army. There's the EM. MP on the Redeemer. Can Space actually jump Knight Stealth Field to eliminate those descents on the left side as one Mechapede gets absolutely annihilated and this one Redeemer is absorbing so much damage from our team in the north but will it stand? Will all of that damage actually earn something for our team in the north? No! The superior position is Bike Rush Owns and Drive as they push forward even an Obelisk on the front line to start putting out extra damage that Redeemer did exactly what it needed to do. It absorbed so much DPS from that team in the north. In the meanwhile, who's got more Predator tanks? It looks like an Obelisk is going to be helping out Futurama to win the Predator tank fight. Juggernauts and Predators versus merely the Predators of Green Zero. And it's all decided in one battle as Green Zero, me being the primary person remaining, and has now been defeated. Master Leaf leaves the game. The GG gets called and game number four goes to bike rush futurama and drive all in a couple of moments all of that build up all of that cash spent on those armies drive hilariously far behind but master leaf just flatlining there as he got burned to a crisp and was never really able to recover he tried to do what he can to help out but ultimately it just wasn't enough in drive. He really tried something there, and it put him way behind. But Bike Rush and Futurama able to come through. The Juggernauts really being key for Futurama to allow him to win absolutely that Predator Railgun fight versus Green Zero. And that'll do it for game number four. Let's see what happens in game number five. Which takes us to the map, Dark Waters. Not one that we see very often but it will be present here in the finals as the red GDI making up the team currently in the lead. This is Bike Rush Owns. And as the green nod in the middle, almost invisible on the minimap, this is Drive. And finally, as the Cyan GDI way down here in the south, this is Futurama. This map is a little bit unusual, and if you're not familiar with it, we will kind of do a little bit of an overview, but it's one of those official maps that's just a little bit funky. As the blue nod, this is space. It's amazing how purple all of the blue nod looks, but as the purple screen, this is Master Leaf. And meanwhile, as the orange GDI, this is Green Zero. 
I mean, look at this. It's ridiculous the way the green shows up on this mini-map. It's absurd. Triple militants coming out for Drive. So we do see a nice rotation of factions from most players. Drive has played Nod, I think, pretty much the whole way through. Futurama's mostly played GDI, but Bikrashones keeps rotating around. He's playing pretty much every single faction. It's nice to see that there hasn't been a lot of hexalaming or too many builds that are a little bit boring to watch, but no hexalaming at all indeed, and not really even any mind control or like teleportation and building capture shenanigans. It's been pretty straightforward games. You know, maybe some flame tank rushes, flame tanks here or there, but nothing really at all bizarre or unusual. Uh, oh no. Well, Master Leaf, he's not dead. Uh, losing some Harvesters is going to hurt, but he should be able to pull out of this, especially with his friends providing him a little bit of support. He was going straight into a nerve center, which is what was going on there. So this map is uh, more in the asymmetrical category. That, I don't, I didn't realize that Tibfield grew up on top of the hill. That's really interesting that it does that. This is also one of those maps that does have some ground that you can kind of utilize that's difficult to get to, so some players will drop their drone ship up here if they're playing Scren and uh, kind, of, kind of utilize that space to hide away. We've seen that in, like, FFAs or 2v2v2s on this map. But, uh, ooh, we are going into eight Storm Riders, and he gets spotted by Bike Rush Owns, so he is maintaining that vision. He's keeping an eye on his opponents so that he can keep an eye on what exactly their strategies might be. Green Zero heading out with a couple of pit bulls. He's going to be taking a look at the harvesters of Bike Rush Owns, and Bike Rush Owns, who's taken his natural expansion and is uh, tr going economy first on the natural expansion. So this is not a double war factory play by Bike Rush Owns. Oh, the drone ship taking so much damage. And uh, the drone ship does take a ton of damage right when it's deploying. So the MCVs take a lot of damage as they are on the move. But the drone ship takes a decent amount of damage while it's on the move. But right when it's in that landing phase, if that's when the shots hit, it does maximum damage. That is when it is most vulnerable is during that landing phase. And that's why you saw just that health get absolutely deleted. But double gravity stabilizer. So Master Leaf is hurting economically. He's not going to be very quick on the expansion. But he can recover from here. He can get back in this game. Catalyst Missile nicely locks down this refinery from Futurama, and if that's a refinery replacing it, he is only halfway done with that. So that's going to severely hamper the economy of Futurama as well. And now Bike Rashones, he's showing up here with a couple of uh, pit bulls to try and push away these Storm Riders, which are actually already battered and bruised, which is why you saw one fall immediately there. And uh, one pit bull getting eliminated, but you're always going to be okay with trading out a couple of pit bulls if it keeps the Storm Riders away from your harvesters and away from your economy. Bike Rush Owns taking a smidge of damage there, but nothing really to worry about. And the Storm Riders are going to have to head back home relatively soon. They are battered and bruised pretty badly. Orca's coming in for Green Zero. Who's going to be able to gobble up two, maybe even three of these Harvesters? And he's not going to go for that last one. So he's going to commit pretty heavily to the attack, but not maximum. Does lose one Orca there, maybe two. And a couple of those Harvesters could have gone down. A couple of those extra Harvesters could have gone down. There's the drone ship for Master Leaf, just as his main base is completely dried up. He's going to be transitioning onto his natural expansion, and oh, those pit bulls barely missing their opportunity to get some lovely shots against that drone ship as it was landing. Futurama showing up with a perfect harassment force of pit bulls to hit these harvesters right as they are transitioning down. Going to be forcing Master Leaf and Space to join forces in the defense, and actually Bike Rush Owns is showing up at the same time, trying to shut down the descent and stop that anti armor from being a part of this fight. More Harvesters getting targeted down. Master Leaf with maybe only two or three Harvesters left in this entire game as Space shows up to try and push away the forces of our team on the left side. Green Zero also showing up with a couple of Predator tanks to eliminate 
those pit bulls and goodbye all of those pit bulls the mcv not taking too much damage space and or drive and bike rush still here with a little bit of a presence and space getting pushed away as he loses his last bike there and for some reason Bike Rush owns decides to leave a couple of APCs, a couple of pit bulls here against the Scorpion uh, Predator tanks of Green Zero. Green Zero going to be able to push that away. Space has delayed his own natural expansion by quite a bit to get out a Redeemer nice and early. So he has got a fast Redeemer out on the field. And also, I mean, we did see him drop at least two barracks earlier on to help defend Master Leaf and help Master Leaf survive the onslaught. Orca's still being pretty active, it looks like, for Green Zero. He's hunting around the map, but he has already eaten up his entire natural expansion. He's got himself a Marv out on the field, but not a lot of Tiberium under his control, and he's going to be looking to long-distance harvest from that big green center Tiberium field as Drive is also already doing that. Drive working away at this field with the help of Futurama. Lots of stealth gen generators as the disruption tower is giving that aid to his units. Orca Strike coming in against these harvesters. It's going to get nice damage. Great hit as Bike Rush owns gets the luck of the draw and hits this harvester directly as it was unloading Tiberium. Pitbulls and Predator tanks all joined together. Green Zero moving out across the map. Space now going to be responding as there is a ton of bike buggy showing up here for Drive. And Drive is going to be able to eat up one Harvester, two Harvesters, three Harvesters going down in very short order. The Avatars and the Redeemer are going to be able to push this attack away, but not before some pretty nice damage was done. Drive going to be able to escape away from there with a good chunk of his bike buggy. Orbital Bombardment not quite cleaning up any of those Harvesters, but once again, Master Leaf is in a very vulnerable state with these harvesters four five harvesters here but a couple of them low on hp and ready to die at nearly a moment's notice space rebuilding some of those harvesters and bike rush owns he needs to bring out the emps to stop this marv double engineer double rail guns inside of that marv how many juggernauts only one juggernaut here for bike rush owns and there's the emp locking down in that marv nicely called in there by futurama as Futurama going to be joining the defense here in support power use. Orbital Bombardment completely misses. And that Hammerhead somehow survives that supersonic airstrike. Firehawk's going to be coming around. And this is just pure damage output from Bike Rush Owens. He doesn't have a lot, but he's got just barely enough to crash through this Marv with the help of those EMPs. And this Marv getting almost nothing done because of those EMPs. I cannot believe that Bike Rush Owens somehow managed to stop those Predator tanks and that Marv with basically nothing. He had like two saltine crackers and some balsa wood and he just played a drum solo on Green Zero's skull. Another Redeemer falls as Drive marches his way forward with an infantry army. These guys are somehow making truly a mountain out of a molehill. It's like they've got a pile of garbage and yet somehow they're beating back our team on the right side pushing them back and drive has done a pretty good job it feels like of capturing a huge chunk of tiberium and it, apparently he's just using it to make bike buggy and infantry in combination with the marv of futurama the juggernauts doing the real heavy lifting here striking everything from a distance. That artillery advantage is so incredibly powerful. Even Bike Rush Owens going to be showing up with a couple of Orcas to do that extra bit of damage. Master Leaf falling apart. Master Leaf late to the game in terms of economy, and he just never got his feet under him. That early disruption, that early MCV snipe, and he was never able to recover. And I mean, when you're going up against guys like Bike Rush Owens, Drive, and Futurama, if they get an inch ahead of you, it feels like a mile and even someone like Master Leaf who is a fantastic player was not able to come back from the MCV getting killed like that from his economy getting disrupted from the very first moment well four predator tanks do show up for green zero and I mean many times before we've seen four or five sneaky tanks in your opponent's base do absolute wonders to turn things around but uh oh that was not that when you've got Orca's right there. It does not do anything to help you out in that case. 
Futurama slowly marching his way through the old base of space. And uh, really, it's all down to Green Zero. Master Leaf and Space have both left the game. And it looks like we're going to be getting some awakened squads coming in here as, well, Green Zero is going to try and make something out of this engagement, but it's going to be tough with uh, Drive, Futurama, and Bike Rush all closing in around him. Futurama with the Marv slowly making its way across the map, the Juggernauts as well. There's the Marv behind the Juggernauts. And uh, I'm not even sure what happened here. It's Orcas and Hammerheads destroying the Juggernauts. Green Zero's army falls apart, and even his MCV getting EMP. That will do it for game number four. Futurama Drive and Bike Rush take another win in this series. And, yeah, Drive was doing pretty darn good on the economy. A little bit slow to start, but, yeah, by the end of that there, he had gathered so much Tiberium. And, I mean, he was just throwing away units, but he was happy to do it using those one clicks and just crushing through in that case. And Master Leaf, yeah, taking a slow start and then never recovered, really. I guess Space also got nuked there somewhere in the middle of the game. His economy just got clobbered. But that will do it for this match. Let's see what happens in the next one. And Game 6 takes us to the map, Mountain Precipice, for our first match point game. Will it all be decided here, or will we get to go on to more epic 3v3 action? Let's find out with our team in the south as the red GDI, it's Bike Rush Owns. And as the Cyan Scrin, give it up for Futurama. As the green nod, this is Drive. In the north as the blue GDI, this is Blue Zero. And as the pink nod, this is Master Leaf. And rounding out as the orange screen, this is Space. GDI screen nod, GDI nod screen. Whichever way you want to slice it, we have got all three factions represented here on Mountain Precipice. Precipice. This map has a lot of trees in it. And I guess that is a great little detail to have, is a whole bunch of trees. Always nice to see new maps. We will have to see how this one plays out exactly. Not a lot of uh, neutral structures around the map, it looks like. It does look like there are areas where you would think they would be, like maybe up on this ridge or something, or in this corner or something, but I'm not seeing a lot of... Uh, a lot of areas around the map. Let's take a quick look over at Drive. Okay, we've got ourselves. Is this the same? This might be the same. Oh no, it's a flame tank with a Reckoner as a follow-up. So let's see how Space manages to deal with this. He doesn't have a whole lot out here, and uh, I assume a body block is going to be coming in here with a building planted down or something. But uh, Photon Cannon kind of on the outside, nowhere really close to this flame tank, as a couple of bikes show up for drive as well. Space forced to sell off one of his refineries, which means his power plant and his refineries are going to be extremely under threat here. And starting out game number six with an extremely spicy match here by these guys. It looks like Space is dead in the water. Meanwhile, Master Leaf going for his own flame tank rush, but it gets caught. He was trying to sneak by and go for Futurama's stuff, but he missed the opportunity, and now his flame tank is dead. A full MCB push by Green Zero, so this is going to be a double punch. Green Zero and Master Leaf joining forces to punch right through Bike Rush Owns. If they can take Bike Rush Downs, they stand a really good chance of then being able to take down Futurama and drive but at this current current moment uh drive and futurama have got themselves a flame tank and one dead spaceman so they are going to be just heading right into the front lines 
Uh, but really, they're going to be swinging around and just killing infrastructure. And I don't know what Master Leaf is going to do to stop this, but we'll have to see. At the meantime, Green Zero is going to be losing Harvesters to the Bikes of Drive. Meanwhile, Bike Rush Owns is just here to keep them busy. Futurama sending a couple of descents in to push them back, and this attack has kind of stalled out. Bike Rush Owns moving his MCV away from the front line, and the battle does transition. Where's that? The Flame Tank is not doing anything. That's a double vent Flame Tank. Very low on health is going to be just uh, Green Zero has been defeated so it's all up to Master Leaf to 1v3 this and in game number 6 with pretty much everything on the line this is going to be a really tough one for Master Leaf to come back from very difficult game to try and uh, mount, mount a defense in he loses a harvester to the disintegrators of Futurama and uh, Master Leaf is uh is not going to be feeling good about this position in this game. Flame Tank still sitting derelict, and that is it. Master Leaf has been defeated. The Flame Tank Rush unable to be stopped by space, and he just he got he got slapped out of nowhere with that Flame Tank Rush. He did not see that coming at all. Green Zero and Master Leaf were trying something, and that may have actually worked. The, the flame tank coming in from Master Leaf, it had, if it had sw either swung around to the north while Green Zero was setting up his main push and then kind of swung around and, and done some damage on the back end, instead of trying to sneak through the middle but not really through the middle, like driving right past Bike Rush's vision to go for Futurama, it seemed like a weird path to take, but that will do it some... Critical missteps made by Master Leaf, Space, and Green Zero in that game number six. Some bold choices, but some critical missteps ultimately giving the win to Futurama Drive and Bike Rush. A big congratulations to those guys for bringing it home in the 3v3 tournament. I know we didn't look at all of the rounds, but... Uh, and the Green Zero Master Leaf Space side of the semifinals, there were just no replays. So I don't know what happened in the semifinals, but it looked like Bike Rush Owns Drive and Futurama kind of brushed through their group, and then there were no replays on the other side. And I'm not sure what happened there, but that will do it for the 3v3 tournament. Some fantastic action throughout the entirety of the Kane's Wrath Championship Series. And I'm so glad that you guys could join me for it. Once again, big thanks to David for donating the prize pool. That guy has provided us with months of action between the 1v1s, the 2v2s, and the 3v3s. And a big thanks to Bike Rush and the other folks who helped him out in organizing, running, and producing these three or four tournaments, including the mid-to-beginner 1v1 tournament from way back in March. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And it was a short series, but it did have some awesome moments. So this is Cybert, signing out.